During today's lecture, we'll discuss idea assessment, feasibility analysis, then further feasibility analysis divided into its four main parts, industry and market analysis, product or service analysis, financial analysis, entrepreneur or team analysis. Let's start with the basic definition of idea analysis. Idea analysis means that the process of examining a need in the market, developing a solution for that need, and determining the entrepreneur's ability to successfully turn the idea into a business. So in order to do so, what we need to do will have to go for business idea. There are six important points here. Conducting an idea assessment, conducting a feasibility analysis, developing a business model, crafting a business plan, creating a strategic plan, and then launching the business. A skate pad is basically an idea developed by Alex Burton who said that a sketch pad actually shows you the points or the most important features or five key parameters which are important in order to develop an idea about your product or service. First thing in a sketch pad of the first parameter is the customers. Start with a group of customers who have a clear need which is not addressed. The entrepreneur assess the customers by answering the basic questions about the product or service. That means in order to understand your requirement or the idea assessment, you got to talk to those customers or group of customers who are in need of certain or who have a demand of a certain product or a service, but that demand or that need is not being addressed. What as an entrepreneur you got to do? You have to assess the customer. How you can assess them? by asking them questions and about the goods or services. After this, you'll be in a position to find solutions for it. Second thing is offerings. Describe your idea for a product or service to be offered to the customer. Are you offering a product or a service, an experience or a combination of one or more of these? What are the key features? Describe in detail and make an image of it if you can. You know, when you are offering a product or a service in the market, you must understand the importance of a customer's basic need. If you are offering any product or service, or maybe you are sharing your experience or a combination of these, you must tell the customer what are the key features of your product or service or how your product will solve their problems and how you have something unique which is better than the others who are producing or who are providing the similar goods or services in the market. Alex Burton also says that if possible, make image. That means you need a piece of paper and pencil to write down and make a shape or a sketch a picture of what you are going to do. Value proposition is another important thing. Explain why your product or service is important to the customer. How does it address the need of customers? You know, your value proposition is 
you must address the customer's need you must tell the customer that these products or these services are required by you since you had asked for it and we are giving you things which are required by you which are demanded by you and it will solve your problems so we are giving you a complete solution package in the shape of these products or uh, services now we talk about the core competence does your offering include any technology or unique features which will help differentiate it from the competitors is it based on intellectual property which you can protect that means that when you are offering a product or service you must tell them the technology you have used or some special features which are unique and it will be differentiated from the competitors because of the uniqueness because of the heterogeneity it has on the other hand you must also tell your customer that you have the proprietary right on it intellectual property right that means you have the patent been registered or you have a copyright attached to it as a matter of fact no one else can copy it or no one else can provide it in the market because you have the control and you protect your intellectual property people of course identify the key people of the team who will launch this business you know within your company within your organization you have people who are important for launching this business do they have the skills and knowledge needed to successfully turn the idea into a startup venture you know if the people you have who are working for you and who are taking the responsibility of turning the idea into a startup venture they must have sufficient knowledge skill and experience to successfully turn this idea to reality now we talk about the feasibility analysis feasibility analysis is an analysis of the viability of a business idea which includes four interrelated components you know when we are to launch any business we must see the feasibility we must see the viability is this business viable is this business feasible do we have enough margin to run the business or do we have the uh, ability the team is capable then the product is will be welcomed in the market so we have four component here which will be discussing in our further lecture number 1 industry and market analysis then product or service analysis then financial analysis and then the entrepreneur or team analysis when we discuss the industry marketing feasibility analysis this is the first step in assessing industry attractiveness is to paint a picture of the industry in broad stroke that means at a macro level what does it mean macro level means that you have to see the macro environment of an industry there are six element which bring in changes in an industry or a market number 1 socio cultural 2 technological 3 demographic 4 economic 5 political and legal and 6 is global you can see in this picture that the forces in macro analysis are distributed on all the uh, six sides of the this hexagon let's start with the social and cultural forces 
you know the customs the uh, traditions the method the living style or these sort of forces are very important and of course because of these cultural and social values people have a specific taste or a method or they have some liking or disliking for products or services so it is very important to realize it and it is important to work with it then we talk about the technological forces of course your technological forces change the overall complexion of a product or a service by using technological forces you may be able to supply or sell products at a maybe slower rate at a lower price than others who are trying to compete with you in the market because of technology the uh, product quality increases whereas on the other hand the rates or the price decreases and it becomes more customer friendly then we talk about the demographic forces you can see that on the top of this figure demographic forces means that the customer or the market segment you are trying to uh, sell your products is important like are you interested in selling your product to a younger generation uh, people like maybe kids up to the age of five or are you interested in selling your product to the senior citizens maybe who are 65 and above or you are interested in the ladies because your garments or your dresses are meant for them or are you interested in those young men who are working from at least nine to five and they need some casual and comfortable cozy clothing so what you are pro uh, providing to them what product you are going to produce all this also depends upon the market segment which you are going to address and this demographic figures are very important and they are linked with the economic forces as well economic forces means that you are talking about the income structure of the people your uh, who are your potential clients or those people who like are going to buy your products what type of economic group are they from the lower income group or are they from the elite class and you want to set a niche market at which says high price less transaction or you want to set yourself for low price more transaction you know these economic affairs and economic forces like inflation unemployment and the uh, growth patterns or the other things which are linked to this can, uh, this uh, community is very important we also see that political forces play a strong and very very vital role due to political forces due to legal uh, and regulations and legal laws and some of the restrictions which are being placed by the political forces like you cannot sell x type of products in this specific area because in this specific area there is a different brain set of the people who are actually run by a specific political party or who have a specific political thinking ecological forces actually take you to the international trade or international market sometimes these international markets are to be set but 
with the uh, channel how you have made or you are like uh, interrelated with international market do you have a product market available in the international market can you penetrate into the international market all these things are very important while you are thinking about changing your idea to new business venture now we talk about porter's five forces model a useful tool of analyzing a specific industry's attractiveness within the competitive environment is the five forces model developed by michael porter of harvard business school he says that rivalry among companies competing in the industry plays an important part you must understand that what your rivals or what your competitors are doing in the market how suppliers are the bargaining power at what price they are ready to supply how you can negotiate with them in order to like reduce the cost of production in maybe you want to buy raw materials and for that you are depending on a few suppliers maybe they have a curtail you'll have to break the curtail sometimes and find that one supplier who's ready to sell you products maybe at a lower price but generally what we have seen in practical life that suppliers are very strong and they make curtails and they sell their products at their given prices they don't sell it at a lower price. on the other hand the buyers also are very important when we talk about the bargaining power because the buyers are the last or the main customer or your potential customer or buyer who are going to buy the product from you do you have sufficient margin in the product prices or would you go for fixed price because you know that the buyers are such that they will not come and bargain with you rather they'll just purchase on whatever price has been given to them but generally speaking or practically we have seen that it is not the case in many cases if your product is new you'll have to bargain with people for selling your product so keep a good margin with you so that you can have a bargaining power while you are negotiating with your customers another important issue according to porter's research that is the threat of new entrants of course there are new entrants in the market how you are going to stop them or how you will protect your product from these new entrants maybe they come up with some such substitutes for products or services that will push you out of the market so in order to stay in the market you must understand that who are the new entrants what technology they are using what sort of substitute products are coming in the market how you can deal with these alternative products you can see that michael porter's five forces model of competition as a figure you see that industry competition and extent of rivalry is set in the middle suppliers on one hand buyers on another hand potential entrants are important so they are pushing into the industry on the other hand we also see that substitutes are also coming so you need to understand this figure in order to understand michael porter's five forces model now let's talk about the product or service analysis the very important question here is do we have a market in order to find a market the need of your commodities products or services you need to do research in a number of ways basically research are primary research and secondary research 
when we talk about primary research, it is the process of collecting first-hand information or data and analyzing it. That means maybe you do it through your questionnaires and customer survey. Maybe you use focus groups. You may use in-home trials. Maybe you use prototypes. Let's start and discuss each one separately. Secondary research is actually the process of gathering data which has already been compiled or published and is available, often at a reasonable cost, sometimes even free of cost. Now let's talk about the customer survey and questionnaires. Here it is very important that you design your questions precise and concise to get unbiased results. Test your survey on a small number of people before putting it in use. Web surveys are economical, easy to conduct, and feedback is fast. In all these customer surveys, you either use email or you use uh, posting mails through your post office, or you may use, uh, in today's world, it is online survey also. What is very important here is the preciseness and the conciseness of your questionnaire. If your questions are concise and precise and to the point and specific, it will be easier for the customer or the people who are under your uh, observation or under survey that they understand your questions well. Once they understand it well and clear, then they will give unbiased answers. As a consequence, your results would be unbiased and free of error. Sometimes researchers need to design focus group. That means a small number of potential customers give their feedback on specific products or services. What researchers do, they call people maybe on a tea break, ask them to sit down and see the product and discuss about the product or service and give their feedbacks. Prototypes is an effective way to gauge a viability of goods or services it is to build a prototype of it. What it means? It means an original functional model of a new product which entrepreneur can put in hands of potential customer so that they can use it, test it, and then give their feedback. In this case, samples are being made and these samples are being given to the potential customers after Using this sample, after testing these samples, they give feedbacks which are more accurate than other uh, type of feedbacks. Another method which has been used is in-home trials. Market research technique which involves sending team to customers home to observe them as they use a company's product or service. In this case also, small samples are being given to people and for example, a soap or shampoo or maybe in some cases, uh, toothpaste and these people are asked to use it maybe for a day and next day, the same team of researchers or the uh, research officers, they visit them they ask them about their observations, they ask them about the product quality or the fragrance in case of uh, shampoo or maybe in case of uh, soap as well. So this is a very useful way of doing trials in home, okay? Windsheet research. Windsheet research means that a researcher 
rooms around, goes and checks in the market, supermarkets, what is the market trend? How people have interaction with the client. So he interacts with the client or she interacts with the client. Find out what are their requirements and what other in the similar business are doing. You know, in many cases, in case of first or primary research, it is also important that you directly go in the market and you might have noticed that when you visit some supermarket or some uh, big grocery store, there are people with questionnaire or piece of paper and pencil standing outside and they ask you some questions and they mark them according to their requirements. Sometimes they give a small uh, product. So they room around, they check whether, for example, there is a new ice cream. People want to, uh, an entrepreneur wants to introduce. What he may do, he will try to see and go around in different supermarkets and find out from the customers that what ice cream they are buying, what is the flavor, what are the taste uh, levels which they are looking for, what are the trend in the market, who is going more for, for example, chalk bars or who needs cone ice creams and who are more interested in the big baskets of ice cream or we say the uh, liter packs or two liter packs of it. After doing all this, they get first hand uh, data and information and then they work according. Secondary research, as I've already discussed that there are different ways and various methodologies used to conduct secondary research. Trade associations and business directories are a good source of business areas and information on businesses. Trade associations and the use of business directories give you a fair idea about the people who are in that business and what products or services they are providing, how they are dealing with customers, these things you can get through business directories or through trade association. Then we talk about the industrial databases. Several online business databases are available through Chamber of Commerce and Industry and also through Bureau of Statistics, different libraries, etc. We talk about then census data. This data is available on Federal Bureau of Statistics uh, data bank and also through census publications. We see that this data actually shows you the number of people in a specific area, number of voters and so on. Market research there are a number of market research survey and studies on specific subjects already done and compiled by others, institutions or organizations. These research are available and there are some results like Gallup Pakistan, like uh, Business Research Bureau, Marketing Research uh, Consultants, you know, these people their research is already available and you can find the reports of these research through your internet sometimes, sometimes by visiting these organization, maybe paying us very smaller cost for that. Articles, a number of articles and research work being carried out by researchers on customers need and solutions are also available on economic and business review pages review pages of leading daily newspapers and magazines like Pakistan and Gulf Economist they uh, publish a number of uh, articles which are used by researchers for their research purposes then we see the yellow pages of dawn or business re recorder and 
we find the uh, customers need and solutions in them internet is always a very very good source in today's world it gives a vast market research online through different internet engines like google yahoo or fox firefox etc entrepreneurs may take benefit from these online information and they can use these uh, research already compiled by others through their internet now we talk about the financial feasibility analysis the most important question here is is there enough margin you know while you want to uh, start a business and you have to look at the financial part of it you see the viability of your product you see how much profit margin you have what are the cost and benefit of this product so capital requirement is the first and foremost <coughs> element and here an entrepreneur needs money capital to start a business it depends what type of business he or she is intending to start generally the service businesses require less capital whereas the manufacturing leads large capital in order to purchase factory areas building construction machinery procurement of raw material training of staff and a huge budget is needed for promotional strategies etc an entrepreneur needs to have a thorough knowledge of expenditures and very accurate cost analysis should be done in order to step up in the market and to smoothly running of a business you know capital requirement means that a person an entrepreneur will have to very very clearly see how the funds will be managed how the money or the uh, funds will be generated what is the margin of profit how initially he or she will have to stand in the market how much expenditure for advertising is required what is the expenditure for services they are going to provide the fixed cost and the uh, variable cost all these things are to be taken into consideration while we are analyzing or uh, looking at the capital requirement 